So after years of uh, rampant brutality by the notorious special anti-robbery squad, SARS, uh, that's the unit of the Nigerian police, what began years ago as an online agitation has morphed into a street protest that has quickly swept across Nigeria in the past couple of weeks. Here to give us an update is Ajoki Ulo Otsi, a reporter, a journalist at BBC. Good morning. Welcome. I hope I got your name right. Yeah, you tried, Neville. Good morning. <laughs> I tried. All right. Tell, yeah. tell me the right way. It's Ajoke Ulohotse. Ajoke Ulohotse. I apologize for not getting it right in the first place. No, it's okay. It's fine. Absolutely fine. Great to have you with us this morning. I hope you are uh, safe and your family. Where are you right now? Um, so I'm somewhere in Ekoyi. It's, 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 it's a city in Lagos. Okay. That's where I am right now. Are yeah. they, they... Just about a few meters from Lekki. Okay. where the sad incident happened last night. Um, and the demonstrations are still going on right now, I suspect. Totally, totally. I, I, I just moved from Lekki a couple of minutes ago, and there's still a crowd of protesters in Lekki who are demanding justice for, for the shootings that happened yesterday. Um, Nigerian army officers were, were, were seen at that... At the, All right, so we're having some problems. Hopefully we will Many of the protests. So, so the states are there demanding justice for, you know, every soul that fell last night. So, yeah, that's the situation right now. All right. There's, that, there's still quite a crowd okay, at the protest me, venue. Take me to the start, Tajoke. Take me to the start. Why is this happening? Well, um, you know, the, the start is, is, is quite a, a long time ago. You know, the Special Anti-Robbery Squad was created in 1992 to tackle cases of armed robbery that started in Lagos. And slowly, because, you know, they were doing so well, they spread, you know, across the, the six states in Nigeria. But, you know, in very recent times, which, are, which would be like five, six years, what we've seen is, you know, huge... The extent of brutality is, is massive. Police officers under SARS uh, will brutalize young Nigerians, you know, calling them internet fraudsters. All you have to do is just spot a beard or maybe wear, you know, wear a dread, use maybe an iPhone or drive, you know, a luxury car. And, you know, you are profiled uh, as an internet fraudster. And, you know, I, I, I've had massive stories, very tragic stories of parents who, can't still find their children as we speak because they were picked up by the SAS officers. There have been, you know, situations of killings that, you know, extrajudicial killings over the years. And so on the 3rd of October, and there was another inc incident. All right, so, so again, we're having some issues. Hopefully, we'll clean that up. But, Juki, we're, we're having some problems with, south, south. with your audio. So, hopefully, we could work that out and you could continue your story. All right, I think you're back now. So, continue your story, please. Yes, yeah, so, so, so I was saying that on the 3rd of October, there was another incident in Delta State, South, South, South Nigeria, where a young man was, was equally, you know, harassed and you know, almost killed by SARS officers. And Nigerian youths decided, you know, this time enough, you know, was finally enough. And since, since then, they've been on the street asking, you know, for the, for the federal government, demanding that the federal government end SARS. So it's, it's been a clamor. They've been asking, demanding. They've been on the streets peacefully, you know. These protests have been peaceful up until in, in recent times when, Criminal elements started hijacking the protest. So basically what we've seen is, uh, you know, young people go on the streets, they are dead, they are chanting, end SARS, end SARS. So just days after, you know, all this started, the federal government indeed, you know, through the IG, the Inspector General of Police, indeed came out to say that SARS was, was dissolved. But, but the, the young people were not going to have any of it because this isn't the first time we've, we've had stories of SARS being dis disbanded, you know, they've used all sorts of English to qualify what they were going to do to the SAS. You know, they said they were going to reform them. They were, and, and so, you know, it wasn't enough to hear that SAS had been dissolved again. And so the protests continued. And, and you know, this time protesters were, dis they were demanding for five things because what they wanted was, they wanted justice for people who had died from this brutality. They also wanted compensations for their family. They wanted 
people who had been arrested during the protest released. And at the time, they also wanted the president to speak out on this matter. And, you know, so these demands have been on, you know, young people have continued to occupy the streets of Lagos in different areas up until days ago when, you know, some criminal elements started hijacking the protests. Yep. And, and when that happened, yeah, you were you're about to say something, Neville. I, I don't know if you know, but um, how many youngsters would have been killed? Well, as in if you, um, what's it called now? Amnesty International reported at least about 82, 82 in, what, in, in, in the last couple of, in in, the, I think between two, between 2017 and now. Okay. You know, uh, they've reported 82 cases so you know, the, of young, young men being killed, brutalized, tortured, all sorts. And that's just... The, the the tiny bit of the extent because this protest what this protest has done is to pro provoke people to tell their stories you know we're hearing of stories of parents who've had to go to the police station after their kids were picked up and they were threatened you know with guns they were told that if they don't leave the station they will be killed until today years after some of them have not even seen their kids whether they are dead or alive they do not know and, and that's the situation. And, and so he, 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 was, he got to the point where, you know, young, young Nigerians just thought, oh, no, no, we, we can't continue like this because it was becoming a case of you, 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 could, you could be a target and you, you, there was no cover for anyone. There were situations where SAS officers would drive you to the ATM and get you to withdraw money just to buy your safety or, or, or buy your escape oh, wow. from, from their den. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, so it was, it was so bad. It was so bad, and young people were not just going to have it anymore. By the way, with the, the pandemic going on now, and demonstrations going on now, how does that look? Well, I've been to the venues, venues of protest, as in, in Abuja, you would see the young people you know, are very organized. There's, there's um, sanitizers just at the, as you're entering the, the, the um, protest venues. They distribute free face mask, you use your sanitizers. You know, yeah, social distancing is a bit of an issue because, you know, there's always a crowd, but they try as much as possible to, to observe some of this, you know, COVID-19 protocols at, at, at protests venue yep. up until when everything, you know, went, went sour. Yeah, what about someone like you, Ajoki? You're a journalist. You're actually speaking out against um, uh, the, the police forces. Are you safe? Are you concerned? that you might be harmed in any way, and your colleagues? Well, you, you know, um, journalists have not been free of these attacks. Just, you know, during the protests, we saw um, a journalist from Arise TV, you know, being, his head was, was broken by, by, by a police officer. We've seen other journalists who've been, you know, beaten, brutalized, tortured. So, you know, journalists are not free of these attacks. Being a journalist doesn't quite shelter you you know, from being harassed or being tortured or being brutalized by, by the police officers. So, yes, you know, journalists also face the same kind of situations as, you know, other Nigerians do. Yeah, unfortunate. We don't have a lot of time left. Tell me what you think will happen um, in, in the next uh, couple of days. What will happen? Well, as we speak, tension has been, you know, rife. It's, it's, it's if on, on the streets. There's a, cur a curfew currently ongoing in, in Lagos as we speak. People died yesterday. The Lagos State Governor has come, come out to say, he earlier said nobody died, but just recently he also said one person has died. Obviously, several people have been injured, so there's, you know, quite a number of casualty. And, and you know, young people on the streets defying government. They've been burning, you know, um, hoodlums have been burning police stations, criminal elements have been going to facilities, you know, to destroy. So it, it's not a situation of calm as we speak. What we are hoping, what Nigerians are hoping to see is, is for the president to address these issues. For, for, because, you know, it's been quite, quite silent on the killings that happened yesterday. It's been silent about everything that's been going on for, for about two weeks now. Aside from the fact that he came out to say, that uh, SAS had indeed been dissolved, and they were looking at you know how to uh, how to um, offer, uh, ensure that families get justice. That's about everything Nigerians have heard from the president, and so you know they're, they're looking to see leadership at this point. Now, what would happen from this point on is not is not what anybody can speculate. 
speculate about because nobody knows. Nobody knows what's going to happen. All, all, all we know is, you know, it, it's not safe out there. Yeah. And, and young people are still demanding for justice. Absolutely amazing that you could speak with us this morning. I really appreciate that. I thank you so very much. I pray that everyone will be safe in Nigeria and hopefully I'll see you right here in this studio sooner than later. Thank you so much and God bless you and your, um, your countrymen and women. All right? All right, thank you. Come on. Our thank you very much, Nathaniel. And Joki Ulohotste, a reporter journalist at BBC. Um, and I'll ask the producer that maybe in another week or so we could get her back so she could update us on what's going on in Nigeria. We pray for them as we pray for ourselves here in this pandemic.